Realty Company is a real estate investment trust company, also known as a REIT for short. And in their latest quarterly report, they said that they were the fourth largest REITs in the entire world, sitting currently at a market cap of 35 billion US dollars. Realty Company makes their profit by buying up properties from the largest 500 public companies in the United States, but also now around the world. And they give a large chunk of money to these companies and in return, they get the property from those large companies. And then Realty actually does something called a sale lease back also known as just letting those companies slowly buy back that property over time and they charge those companies interest. For example, a company like Walgreens, maybe they need to raise a bunch of money really quick. Maybe they wanna sell, I don't know, 50 different properties all around the United States, raise something like a billion US dollars. They could go to a bank to do this or they could go to a company like Realty, but they give Walgreens that giant lump of cash and then slowly over time, Walgreens will actually agree to buy back those properties on average over about a 10 year time span. And over that time, Realty actually gets interest as well as the original pay back. But over that time, they're charging roughly about 6% on that billion dollars every single year. So if this is starting to sound like kind of how a bank works, how a bank would just loan a company money, charge them interest over time, and then over a fixed period of time, 10 years for example, that large company would pay back that loan to the bank. It works the exact same way that Realty does. And a bank or a Realty company here is only as strong or as safe as the companies they lend that money out to. If they buy a property from a company that's going to go bankrupt, well, they're not actually going to pay you back that money over time. Realty company is going to be stuck with this property that nobody's paying for and maybe someone else will move in and they can keep renting out the property but that's no guarantee. So again, we need to confirm who's actually renting out these properties. So you can kind of think here that Realty is very similar to how a bank might work, but there's a few exceptions. Because Realty is technically a real estate investment trust company, they've got to pay out all of their taxable income, 90% of it at least, back to the shareholders of Realty Corp. So they currently own about 13,100 properties. So we have 76% of the portfolio of properties, a non-discretionary low price point. You're thinking of a retailer that is maybe more in the healthcare sector and they're more in the consumer staples. Maybe they're a Walmart type character. Then 15% of the portfolio is non-retail. That's probably even better. And a few companies, for example, that might do this would be industrial type companies. Uh, Realty has bought a slice of a warehouse or maybe it's a factory. And those companies might be a little bit sensitive to the economic situation, but hopefully there's a mix of these non-retail companies. So that kind of balances out. And then we have 9%, which is other. So I'm guessing that is a discretionary retail or just whatever didn't fit those other two definitions. So this is again, a nice little diagram just to show you how that company has developed its ownership of those different properties. Post 2010, now we're moving towards investing in Europe. So they started investing in Europe in roughly 2017, starting primarily in the UK, but they've branched now into Spain, Italy, and Ireland as well. But there's actually two more examples that are quite important down the bottom right. Realty company is also known for making large single purchases of properties co-investing investing with some smaller type companies. For example, they've made a $1.7 billion investment into Wynn's Boston Harbor gambling property, a uh, large hotel. But another quite interesting little investment is into vertical farming. So they're also getting into more niche investments, not just trusting the big blue chip company name. So that could be a nice area to maybe earn a little bit of high interest. They're not as safe investments. They might charge a little bit extra when they lease back those properties to the original owner. But it also means that you're again getting even more diversified. You're getting away from the same names over and over again. And that's even supported by this diversified high quality portfolio diagram. So on the left there, you've got two different colors. You've got an orange and a blue, and I can't actually see whether that links up to the right hand diagram. I don't think it actually does here. So naughty, naughty realty company. But I'm guessing here, just looking at the names, Dollar General, you've got Walgreens, you've got FedEx. Those look more like your traditional safer type companies, still retail companies 
but non-discretionary. Then you've got Win and you've got AMC. They could be more classed as discretionary. So that's what I'm just guessing here from the diagram because they don't have a key down the bottom. You can see that no company of the top clients is more than 4% of the total portfolio. That means realty company is not open to a large risk if for example, Walgreens goes bankrupt or if Dollar General goes bankrupt, that's only a small fraction of the total portfolio. And if it's a smaller name like AMC, then it's 1% of the portfolio. They're going to be able to absorb that massive risk. Just a reminder guys, I'm not actually pitching a sponsor in those videos at the moment here, but I would like you to consider to like and subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you just wanna support the channel, help share videos, but only subscribe if you wanna get access to high quality research content. And I'm trying to make these videos as unbiased as possible, not trying to get you to sell or buy the stock specifically, merely here just to inform you about the data and the performance of the company. All right, that's the pitch for the video. Let's get back to it. Let's have a look at how Realty stacks up against S&P 500 companies, but also other REITs. And they've got just a crosshair diagram showing you, or a quadrant diagram, showing you beta on the x-axis, the horizontal type axis. So further to the right on that diagram is saying that company does not fluctuate as much or is not as correlated as the SP 500. So for example, if the SP 500 goes up 10%, maybe Realty Company only goes up about 5%. But usually that beta difference mainly comes from the downside. Usually, if you have a low beta company, if the SP 500 goes down 2 3%, maybe in a single day, a big crash maybe it's over a week, maybe Realty Company is actually going up slightly or maybe just loses less on the day. But what's quite interesting here is they're actually nice and high up on the y-axis as well with an average of 14% return per year, that's including dividends. So not only do you have a company that is safe in terms of it's not going in the exact direction as the rest of the stock market every single day, you also have a pretty healthy return as well. So overall, it reduces the uh, volatility in your portfolio, but also it has a pretty nice historical return. And that's just a fact, I can't argue against that. And in terms of the REITs in the SP 500, you actually are in the top two positions. I would only say one other company here beats Realty Company, and I don't know what that company is, but hey, top two out of what's that, about 10 different companies, that's not bad. I pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. Now this graph is showing you in red, the interest being paid by high yield companies for their debt. In other words, if a risky company went out to obtain a loan from the usual sources, selling bonds, maybe going to a commercial bank, they're paying interest rates at the moment at about 8%. Whereas the cap rate in terms of realty company is sitting at about 7%, slightly under. What does that mean? It means that if that company wanted to, instead of going and getting a loan, it would sell some of its property to realty company. Well, they would obtain funds from realty company and pay an interest rate of about 7% on that debt. Whereas if that company went out and took loans, they'd be paying about 8%. So as long as that cap rate is sitting nice and underneath that high yield interest rate, that means that Realty company is going to have a nice long line of companies willing to lend lease their properties to them. But what's potentially a little bit misleading about that graph is does realty company actually want to lend money to high yield companies? If a third of them are going to go bankrupt in the next recession, I'm just pulling that number out of my butt a little bit here, but that might be true. If we have a harsh recession, a bunch of companies will go bankrupt. That's just a fact. So that could be a source of risk in terms of customers not paying rent, and that would reduce the revenue of realty company and also the profitability. And you can actually see this if you compare the price of realty stock during the dot-com bubble bust, which was actually a mild recession in terms of the real economy, where realty company actually made about a 70% return over that time point. It was probably over 80% if you include dividends. Whereas if you look at the GFC, then royalty company lost about 40, 45% over that time span, 2007 to 2008. So even a safe company will get absolutely obliterated during a harsh recession or a hard landing. Having a quick look at their shares outstanding, since 2018, the number of shares has roughly doubled a bit over, which is not fantastic to see. That's probably almost the worst I've seen looking at stocks recently, but trust me, that's actually uh, got a good purpose here. Now, the main reason why is Realty Company is a REIT. In other words, it needs to pay 
90% of its taxable income out as a dividend. So if you pay out 90% of your income, you don't have much money left to reinvest. So these REITs must dilute their shares in response. So they're quite a unique little fish here. The realty company market cap, so what people are currently paying in terms of total value from the company, since 2018 has actually moved from 15 billion US dollars to about 35 billion US dollars, just slightly over double. But what's quite good here is the equity in the company. So basically assets subtract liabilities, how much value does the company actually have on the books they have about 5 billion us dollars 2018 it's now worth over 30 billion us dollars time that's about times five times six there but the shares outstanding has actually doubled only meaning you're getting three times as much worth for every share of realty as you did back in 2018. That's a good positive there. Now the revenue of the company has actually increased rapidly since 2022. It's made a lot of purchases and it had to dilute shares to do so. But since 2018, we've gone from about 1 billion US dollars in revenue over a year span up to over 3 billion US dollars. So why has the company been down 37% since 2020? Well, I think it's stuck between a rock and a hard place in a few different ways. A few people might be worried that the company might have a few customers that just won't pay rent if we have a harsh recession but also we have high interest rates that means that the old impressive dividend of realty company that was about four percent back in 2018 us treasury bills that are ultra safe paying a five percent interest rate at the moment you can get that as an investor like you and me so the price of realty company had to collapse so the dividend that they were paying for the company that was four percent a while ago now is equivalent of about six percent six point one percent at the moment price of realty company actually decreases comes down the dividend yield would go up so you're paying the same amount of dividend for the company price goes down the dividend rate per dollar of shares goes up so that's how I know the company is quite cheap at the moment because the company hasn't had a 6% dividend for quite a long time since really the GFC and that's how we really measure how cheap the company is so if you're looking for a real estate type investment company especially one that's more geared towards commercial real estate in terms of large business not little office buildings Buildings, then maybe this company is for you. But if again, you're afraid of a deep, dark depression, like a 10% unemployment rate, then maybe this company could actually go down quite a lot further. And that's really the downside risk for us here. So comment down below if you're already an investor of Realty Company. Tell me your thoughts. Do you like the company or not? And I'll see you in the next video as suggested by the YouTube algorithm in the top right. See you in the next. Bye.